morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Atasca What's New in FLAC 2D9 webinar. Uh, today, uh, we have uh, two presenters, uh, Andre Pachigoret and uh, Derek Blacksma. Um, they will be speaking to you um, about FLAC 2D9 and all the exciting new uh, features and changes that have been implemented. Andre is Senior Software Engineer and the FLAC 2D Product Manager, and Derek is a Software um, Developer and Geomechanics Engineer. My name is David Dugagne. I'm a Senior Engineer in technical, in technical Marketing, and I'll be the organizer for today. Next slide. So um, we will have an opportunity towards the end of the presentation um, to answer questions. So throughout the presentation, uh, if you have a question, just use the GoToWebinar dialog. You can see what question, the question area is, and you can just type in your question and hit send. And then at the end of the uh, presentation, uh, we will go through as many questions as possible. If we don't have a chance to finish answering all the questions during the live event, we'll follow up with you on answers. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, Andre Petigoritz is here. Um, I will continue the presentation and also Derek Blanksma is going to uh, join in and uh, talk about a few features of flag 2 d uh, First, we're going to slide, uh, we're going to start with a few slides about uh, what is flag 2 d what its, uh, its applications, a little bit about some history and background information. Uh, for those people who never used uh, Itasca software and particularly flag or flag 3 d uh, flag 2 d is um, very similar to those codes. Uh, and I just would like to mention um, what it is about and few general applications among uh, variety of applications where it can be used. FLAG2D is a computational software for modeling and analysis of displacement, stress, and stability of soil, rock, and structural support in 2D. This is very short description, uh, I would say quite incomplete description of what FLAG2D can, be, can do. Uh, but it highlights major uh, features of flag 2 d And among major applications where flag 2 d can be used is tunnel stability and support, uh, surface excavations and foundations, slope stability and stabilization, uh, embankments and dams, and many, many others. Uh, people who are familiar with uh, our other software probably know that um, it's a very versatile software that can be applied for a variety of different applications which of course I cannot put all of them on this slide, but uh, we're gonna mention quite a few throughout the presentation. The history of FLAG uh, starts more than 40 years ago. Um, Itasca flagship finite volume software FLAG was released almost 40 years ago. And here we refer it uh, as finite volume, but in application to 2D. And in the beginning, we uh, refer to it as finite difference, but really it's based on finite volume formulation. Um, FLAG is widely used in geomechanical analysis, and it's often used for uh, rather complex analysis like highly nonlinear uh, uh, deformations, dynamics, large strain analysis, and so on. And here on the right, you can see uh, original manual from 1986 for FLAG version one, and the original uh, FLAG version one on, uh, I believe it's uh, IBM, um, i386 computer, one of the first laptops. Um, so you can see that FLAC has very long history, very successful history, uh, very proven history uh, in track of uh, applications. Uh, and basically we're building flag 2 d on all this uh, history and all the power and strength of uh, all different versions of FLAC. So why we actually switching from uh, FLAG, previous versions of FLAG to FLAG 2D? First of all, FLAG 2D is a major overhaul uh, to modernize the classic FLAG program, and it's a successor of FLAG 8.1. Uh, however, FLAG 2D uses FLAG 3D platform and assumes uh, plane strain conditions, uh, same as FLAG 8.1. FLAG 2D is built and lives within modern Itaisca framework, uh, which is the same as for FLAG 3D, PFC, and FreeDeck. Uh, and this 
framework provides consistent user experience as well as advantages in code development. Basically, it's uh, enormous unification between the codes. And now Flag2D can use all the advantages of common framework and different modules that are available in Flag3D, PFC, and FreeDeck. Uh, what will happen with the uh, previous version of Flag? Uh, this is probably uh, important for people who are very familiar and who has been, have been users of Flag 8.1 or earlier versions. So uh, Flag, previous versions of Flag will stay at current version 8.1 which will be supported and updated, though mostly bug fixes, uh, and that will be updated until one year after flag 2 d version 10 is released. So um, basically, we will continue in support of flag 8.1 while uh, adding uh, all the remaining functionalities and features to flag 2 d and obviously adding uh, new things as well. So, uh, Flag 8.1 is still around, it's still supported, uh, but uh, users of Flag 8.1 are encouraged to at least try uh, and hopefully switch to Flag 2D uh, version 9 and later use uh, all following versions. Uh, another question that people may have is why using Flag 2D versus Flag 3D when uh, certain models can be built with Flag 3D? Uh, first of all, let me uh, mention that uh, Flag 2D is uh, based on plane strain analysis. And here's um, an image. Um, let me see if I can get the pointer. Here's an image of what plane strain analysis is about. Uh, essentially, we assume infinite out-of-plane out of domain uh, in which uh, out-of-plane strains are zero. Um, so that's a simplification from full 3D analysis. And this makes uh, Flag 2D uh, significantly faster than Flag 3D. So basically, if you run these two similar models in Flag 2D and Flag 3D with uh, appropriate boundary conditions, Flag 2D will be faster. And I will show later how much faster. Uh, Flag 2D is also simpler to work with uh, when operating with 2D geometries and models and flag 2D is cheaper than flag 3D. Uh, these three factors are probably the major difference of uh, why people would choose flag 2D versus flag 3D, even though um, both software uh, look very much alike and feel very much alike. Now, what's the difference between flag 2D version 9 and flag 8.1? Uh, as I mentioned, flag 2D uses the same user interface as flag 3D. Uh, Flag2D uses the same logic for project data file and save file management as Flag3D. And commands and fish uh, in Flag2D mimic Flag3D style. And in most cases, they are exactly the same. So these are probably uh, some of the major uh, differences that people are going to see when switching from uh, Flag8.1. Flag2D will uh, feel and work very similarly to Flag3D. One other very important feature of Flag2D is that it does not use IJ space. People uh, who are uh, familiar or users who are of Flag8.1 are uh, very much familiar with what IJ space is. Uh, any geometry in Flag8.1 or earlier versions is represented in a structural grid in so-called IJ space as shown here. And all the operations with the geometry, with the model, have to be done using um, IJ indexes, or most of the operations at least. In Flag2D, this is not the case. You essentially uh, just create geometry as geometry of the model as needed using uh, regular coordinates. Then you can group certain objects within this geometry, and you just operate on these objects or use coordinates directly. This allows using not only structured meshes, as shown for Flag 8.1, but a combination of structured and unstructured meshes or just unstructured meshes or any, any other combination, what is most su more suitable for the model. And you can see here um, that we can refer to groups of objects, for example, grid points, uh, by using so-called grouping logic, which is the same among all um, Itasca common framework um, uh, codes, uh, Flag3D, PFC, FreeDeck, and now Flag2D as well. 
For those who are not very, fi very familiar with Flag 2D or haven't, haven't used it yet, uh, there's a quick start tutorial in, available in documentation, and you can easily uh, get to the documentation uh, through its web page, which is docsitaskacg.com. Then uh, this is the first thing that you're gonna see uh, when you click on uh, Flag homepage. And from here, you can go to tutorials or new user guide or example applications or commands, and basically uh, look through all this um, material and familiarize yourself. Uh, alternative way how to uh, get to the documentation if you can go, if you go to help and uh, in flag 2D and then click on help and documentation, a local copy of documentation will open for you. A local copy is installed when you install in flag 2D or Itasca software in general. And then you can see it, uh, all the same things there. It's just gonna be locally on your machine. And you can see it through Flag 2D interface. So uh, the best place to start is a tutorial quick start, and you can always refer to it uh, through this slide. All right, now we're gonna talk uh, in about um, more specific uh, features of Flag 2D, what's new, what's different in Flag 2D, and we're gonna cover multiple topics here. Uh, we're not going to go into a uh, significant level of details on each topic. Uh, we're rather going to show uh, all major features of Flag 2D and what can be done with these features. And if there's any significantly different features from either Flag 8.1 or Flag 3D, I will mention them as well. So we'll start with new user interface. Uh, with version 9 of uh, Itasca software, we had uh, relatively significant overhaul of user interface. And now user interface has um, relatively um, organized, I wouldn't say strict, but very well organized structure in which we have um, on the top a main menu with different menu options. On the left side, we have a project pane, uh, which organizes all the project information like data files, plots, save states, sketch sets, geometry sets, and so on. In Flag 2D, uh, only sketch sets are present though. Uh, then uh, we have a command console, which uh, hosts the information of all the inputs and commands that's being typed in uh, Flag 2D. Also here we have Python uh, console, information about fish symbols and state record, which records every um, operation that user done user does uh, in flag 2d finally we have a content workspace which can be shared between data files plots uh, sketch sets and other uh, other uh, tiles that can uh, contain modifiable um, information on the right side uh, we have uh, contextual uh, tools that change depending on what is active currently. For example, for plots, you will see uh, all the operations that, or all the modifications that can be done to plots. Uh, and also you can see a help system here. So there's help panel available. When you click on F1, uh, this pane will be substituted with the help pane. Uh, finally, we have a layout of toggles and uh, status bar. So you can uh, quickly switch on and off any of these panels here. And I will have short demo after I'll go through uh, next few slides so you can see how this uh, UI operates. We also did quite a lot of improvements in building model. And now model is, uh, it's easy to build with a tool that we call sketch. So essentially you sketch your model first in this tool and then you generate zones out of sketched model. So Sketch has powerful tools for model construction and meshing. And here you can see an example of how a model can be built in Sketch with a variety of uh, drawing tools that's available in this, um, in this uh, panel. Uh, here you can import background geometry such as DXF files, STL or raster graphic, graphics, and then uh, trace uh, this geometry to create your model. Uh, you can create geometry by free drawing using number of tools available through the menu, sketch menu here. Uh, you can easily uh, uh, create uh, tunnels and or slopes or dams using a couple wizards that we added. Uh, 
you can also easily create structured and unstructured meshes uh, pretty much by one click. Uh, you can assign groups and edges to zone blocks. A block it's essentially a polygon, closed polygon. So as long as you have a closed polygon, you can create a mesh within it. Uh, you can, uh, we have background grid here. We have rulers. Uh, when you uh, create your geometry, uh, there's snapping options available to background geometry uh, and also background grid. Uh, as I mentioned, you create zones or mesh by press of a button. And finally, when you create, uh, when you generate zones out of sketch, um, flag 2 automatically switch to so-called model pane, where you continue modifications of your model if you desire so. Uh, for example, to assign a constitutive model, to assign material properties, to assign additional groups, and so on. Alternatively, if you don't want to use model pane, you can directly switch to a data file and continue uh, model uh, creation through a data file and commands or fish. Or Python. So a few words about the model pane. So model pane is designed uh, to work on generated zones and faces. And here we refer to faces um, as uh, edges of 2D model. In reality, if you remember, uh, flag 2D is a plane strain analysis. So in out of plane direction, or I can say out of screen direction, it's an infinite uh, plane, which is represented by an edge in 2D. So if you see an edge here, for example, the outside edge of this model, we will call it a face, which is very much consistent with flag 3D terminology. That's why we decided to use uh, this wording to not uh, create any additional confusion. So uh, here you can see that we can uh, show zones or zone faces. And I will show this in a short demo. What's, uh, what can be done in model pane is you can automatically detect model boundaries and assign appropriate group names. You can manually select and assign or change zone, zones and uh, phase groups. I will also show this. You can densify selected zones. You can assign constitutive models. You can uh, set a, uh, or load or save material properties into material database as shown here. You can uh, interactively create structural elements uh, at selected zone phases and uh, the same for interfaces, though properties have to be assigned later through commands. Uh, we will continue working on further improvements of uh, user experience by uh, adding more and more operations to model pane and to sketch to make model generation easier. Uh, finally, before showing a, a short demo, I wanted to mention that we have a very powerful editor in Flag2D, which is shared between all uh, common framework software. I task a common framework software. This editor allows syntax highlighting, line and block selection and editing, commenting and uncommenting, code and line folding, contextual inline help, ability to run and execute the whole data file, or only selected lines of code. Uh, you can also do, uh, the uh, Flag2D also does automatic uh, saving of data files when you execute them, and also does periodic backups. And you can uh, use commands, fish and Python within the same file, even though if uh, you use Python, it has, the file has to have extension .py. Finally, talking about user interface, uh, we had many plot improvements in version, IM, version 9. For example, we uh, have more attributes of contour plots, including user-defined contour ramp, uh, as shown here. Uh, you can modify format and precision of contour legends. Uh, you can, uh, there's now an option to swap access for tables and profile charts. Uh, also, there's option to add minor grid lines to charts, improve lo improved logarithmic scale for charts. Uh, this is very useful option uh, to omit past states when plotting yield states. And uh, in general, more uh, options for uh, contour plots and histories. So with this, I would like to show uh, how the user interface looks like. This is uh, one of the examples that uh, I already showed on one of the slides. You can see uh, that user interface uh, consists of multiple tiles shown here and uh, multiple um, sections of the screen. For example, project uh, section. This is our main working area, uh, console 
uh, section and um, I would call it information of modi or modification section. So uh, before going into each section, I can show how you can maximize or hide particular section, for example. Now my working area is in full screen. I can modify it like this, but just by hiding different uh, parts of the user interface. Uh, everything is, you can move, you can change the size. You can uh, split uh, tiles now. For example, if I want to add another tile here, just to have another plot on the right, I can easily split. Say I have want to have plot on the right. And here I can put any other um, content that I have available, for example, a set. You can see that it appears here, even though it's a little bit small and probably not going to be convenient to work with. I can maximize this window by closing other windows. As I said, I can change its size, for example, something like this. I can close this window, for example. And basically, you can customize your screen as much as you want. Uh, also, Whenever you click on a particular uh, tile, depending on the type of the objects that are there, corresponding menu appears on the right side. And you can, for example, edit different parameters here. This is for sketch parameters. This is for plots. We can see number of plots here. And talking about plots, we have a variety of plots available in Flag2D. You can see that. There are a lot of different plots available. And if you have PFC license, you can add PFC plots here as well. Uh, finally, I wanted to mention the help system. If you click on help and documentation here, it appears on the right side. And you can see that it's the same image that I showed on one of the slides. And you can basically navigate uh, through help without exiting Flag2D. Now, if I uh, go to a data file, one important feature that I probably forgot to mention, let me uh, switch to a data file here, it's contextual help. For example, if I, if I type a command here and then press control space, I can see that all uh, commands that are available for this particular keyword uh, will appear here. For example, zone, uh, let's say zone property command to assign material properties. And now it tells me which material, for which material model I can assign properties. And the same is available for console line. Zone, I press control space. And I can see that contextual help appears here. For example, grid point, and I can just, uh, continue selecting whatever is needed. For example, zone grid point fix or pressure and so on. So this is very useful for those who are not very familiar uh, with uh, commands and syntax in Flag2D or Flag3D. And uh, you can easily see which commands are available just by start typing some of the commands. Uh, I believe this is not, uh, um, this contextual help is not available for fish. So for that, you would need to click on fish scripting, for example, and read which fish uh, commands are available for Flag2D or, um, or general framework. So uh, this is general review of the interface. Now let me uh, start Flag2D from scratch and run very simple model. So you can see how Flag2D, how it's easy to create uh, reasonable models in very short time in uh, Flag2D. So I'm going to start Flag2D with no project. And first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to load background um, geometry from a DXF file and automatically create a geometry out of this DXF. But before creating geometry, I would like to assign uh, um, zone size or which will which will be defined by edge length let's say we want uh, two meters zone size throughout the model 
and now I can automatically create all edges throughout this zone. But let's say I don't want this uh, tunnel here. This is a toy model. Uh, and what I'm doing here is just for illustration purposes. So I can simply select all the uh, points and uh, create my own tunnel using Tunnel Wizard. Let's say we want um, this uh, vertical wall arch roof type tunnel with some different parameters. And I'm going to create it slightly away from this geometry so it automatically doesn't intersect the geometry. So over here. Now I can select it and drag it to this to locate instead of my other tunnel. So now background geometry is not needed. I can simply delete it. Now I want to increase. By the way, uh, you can see that if I select grid points or select points first, then all the selection works only on points. If I select edges, the selection works on edges. Let's say I want to increase discretization, refine the model. Uh, I just uh, change it with uh, zone length. And I can also assign groups here. For example, later I want to create liner along this geometry. So I set group liner here. And then I don't even need to specify which uh, boundaries are set to be liners. I can just refer to this group. Now I can do automatic meshing by going through here. Uh, I'm going to do unstructured mesh and just click on select uh, create mesh now. So mesh is created. Here I'm going to create zone uh, group tunnel. And the model is ready. Uh, now I can create zones out of it. So I click on the button, create zones. And uh, it switches to uh, model pane where zones are created. Let me change a few colors here. Just put some uh, different colors so we can easily distinguish. Uh, here I can assign uh, boundary boundaries to the model or group boundaries. I can assign material properties and uh, uh, constitutive models. So let me show you first how to assign uh, group names to the uh, boundaries of the model so we can easily set boundary conditions later. For that, we can click on this button, assign groups, and now we have numerous different groups available. Actually, uh, before I forgot to select one option here, ignore existing groups. So it's easier. And now we have fewer groups here. And you can see that on the left side, it's group west. On the right side, it's group east. And we still have tunnel or liner group here. Now uh, we can assign constitutive models to the whole model. For example, more Coulomb model. Uh, and we can assign uh, properties to different parts of the model. And this can be done uh, one by one by set material properties, or I can load material database. A material database is user predefined uh, database of properties. For example, I have material database with rock properties that I want to use here, and I'm going to import it to uh, our current model. And then I'm just going to use these properties. So I'm just going to select different parts of the model and assign properties to the model. So for example, soft rock on the top and hard rock on the bottom. And uh, these properties are somewhat randomly chosen. It's not, uh, it's somewhat artificial example. It's just to show the operations. So after this, I would like to save my uh, project and the save state. So I can return to this uh, save state whenever it's needed. So I can save project. For example, I'm going to call it uh, my project. And it offers to save the state. I'm going to call the state geometry and properties. So you can see that save state appeared here. The project is saved. And now I can continue working uh, on a data file uh, by uh, to apply boundary conditions and initialize stresses and actually run the model and excavate this tunnel. So I'm going to split my 
panel to the left. I'm going to create new data file. I'm going to call it main. And usually data files start with model new command. Uh, then I'm going to restore the existing data file. Geom prop. I'm going to set that uh, large strain to off. So I'm going to run in small strain analysis, and I'm going to set gravity to 10. After this, let me copy a few um, lines of code that I, oh, sorry, this is the wrong one, that I already have written to assign boundary conditions. For example, the command zone GP fix velocity at the group bottom. And I can see where my group bottom is. It's this group. And on the left and right side, I will have roller boundary conditions. And it's east and west groups. Then I'm going to initialize stresses with a zone initialize stress command using specific ratio. And I'm going to solve after this. Uh, and save uh, the results uh, in model safe -ini. But before doing that, let me um, create a new plot so we can see how the stresses change. So I'm going to put zone and contour, let's say stress, vertical stress. And here, I'm going to create another plot. And we're going to track displacements here. Yeah, this is good. So we can execute the data file. I can just press execute here. We can uh, do volumetric averaging. So we got some initial distribution of stresses and displacements, and the model is in equilibrium. However, before excavating the model, we need to reset the displacements, ideally velocity and state as well, if there's any um, uh, plastic deformations happening or plastic failures. And finally, we want to excavate the tunnel using zone relax excavate command. Uh, please read about this command in the manual. It's uh, the command is uh, gradually reducing strength uh, of the materials to be excavated, density and stresses, and uh, it's designed to uh, prevent any spurious inertial effects happening when uh, suddenly removing the material in the model. So I can select these lines of code and just say execute them, run selection, and now we can see that my uh, tunnel got excavated, the stress distribution changed, the displacement distribution changed. We can see that there's uh, convergence happening. You can add vectors of displacement and see where the convergence is happening. You can see that the bottom, uh, the floor of the tunnel is converging faster than the walls of the tunnel. After this, the model is saved and pretty much this is full example. You can see that in five minutes, I ran the whole example from scratch. It's pretty easy to build it. Um, it's uh, very easy to mesh the model, and you get results very quickly. Let me get back to the presentation and uh, make a few other uh, notes about the operations and solutions. Uh, in general, we uh, improved how the static and dynamic analysis uh, are executed. They got a bit faster because we did some optimizations on convergence um, criterion. Um, saturated fluid and thermal calculations also got really fa much faster by uh, introducing new and better implicit solvers. I will talk about them a little bit later. If you run dynamic analysis, there is a new option for Maxwell dumping. Uh, Derek will talk about it a little bit later. Plotting got faster. Uh, there's uh, multi-threading uh, in plotting that uh, allowed plotting to be almost 10 times faster in FLAG 2D and FLAG 3D. Uh, we multi-threaded some additional commands 
uh, more uh, improvements in safe and restore models. It's faster now as well. And we introduced more uh, fish splitting and operators. Uh, Derek will mention this as well. When compared to FLAG 3D, uh, FLAG 2D runs uh, two and a half to three and a half times faster. Uh, this is mostly because uh, of internal structure of zones that's used in FLAG 2D. Uh, factor of safety analysis run three and a half to four and a half times faster in FLAG 2D compared to FLAG 3D. And similar uh, numbers are available for uh, axisymmetric analysis in FLAG 2D, uh, even though it's right now implemented only for mechanical module. When compared to FLAG, uh, it's a little bit trickier to uh, see exact uh, speed up because there's different um, convergence ratios implemented by default in FLAG 2D and FLAG. However, uh, if you just use model solve command, the runtime of FLAG 2D will be uh, smaller than uh, FLAG. Essentially, FLAG 2D will run slightly faster on average. So uh, I would say the results are relatively comparable or faster for FLAG 2D. Uh, the only difference is that FLAG 2D um, uses uh, convergence, stricter convergence ratio. So you will get more accurate results while running to the same time, uh, running the same time. Uh, flag 2 d also allows people to use a discrete fracture network, uh, and uh, it provides an efficient tool to generate and manipulate fractures. Uh, with discrete fracture network, you can generate the deterministic and stochastic fractures. You can um, uh, determine intersections between fractures, uh, fractures and user-defined geometries, and so on. You can uh, compute clusters and connectivity properties, uh, simplify fractures, define mechanical properties of fractures, obviously visualize them, and you also have fish and Python access to uh, fracture network. Here is an example of UCS test of a block containing um, 35 random fractures. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, when um, the material starts failing, the failure is happening along predefined fractures. And you can see that we already went over the peak and material is mostly failing uh, along this line where most of the fractures are. So this is something that you can simply do using discrete fracture network uh, and without creating any additional geometry. Uh, FLAG2D allows people to use interfaces, uh, same as in FLAG3D. So we have traditional uh, FLAG3D style interfaces. They are single-sided though. They're characterized by Coulomb sliding and tensile and shear bonding. You can plot and track state uh, of the interfaces, uh, for example, normal and shear state. We also introduced zone joints uh, in common framework, and FLAG2D uh, has them now, but they're not fully um, documented and tested yet in FLAG2D. So I would say it's work in progress yet. Uh, the uh, the uh, Good thing about zone joints is that they are two-sided. Two -sided. They allow uh, much more precise calculations when multiple interfaces and intersecting each other. And this logic is similar to the logic provided in UDEC. So in the coming updates of FLAG2D, we will uh, complete all the testing and documentation of zone joints and people will be able to use them. Uh, FLAG2D enjoys 23 built-in mechanical models. Uh, you can see all of them here and models with uh, blue asterisks are improved models. Green model, green, uh, models in green are uh, models that are new in comparison to FLAG 8.1, and models with two asterisks are completely new in version nine. Also, we have uh, user-defined models. Three of them are currently available. It's pm 4 cent pm 4 sealed UBC-HIST, and ubc Sent is currently in progress and will be available hopefully soon. We expect uh, within next few months. So a little bit more details about new and improved models. First, it's pH model. There was a problem uh, from previous algorithm by Benz uh, that, uh, ex uh, that people could experience when doing uh, hysteretic loops. Uh, basically, when you uh, coming back from hysteretic loop, it was overshooting um, with uh, sure, uh, sure stress, basically didn't go to the original path. Uh, new algorithm brings the path 
when you do hysteretic loop of unloading and reloading uh, back to the original path. And this is very useful for dynamic analysis. Obviously, if you didn't get back to the original path uh, through multiple cycles of loading and unloading, you could get potentially uh, incorrect results. Now, uh, the results are much more accurate, and this is proven here for different examples. We also have improvements in ubiquitous anisotropic model. Uh, in particular, uh, we allow more Coulomb uh, failure in the matrix. Previously, it was only anisotropic elastic. Uh, new model uh, won Mises with optional kinematic hardening. Yeah, it's suitable for metal-like materials. And new interesting model, it's a plastic damage concrete model which is based on damage mechanics and accounts for fracture energy within concrete. Here's an example of concrete beam, uh, which is actually uh, would be represented by an infinite plate in uh, plane strain analysis, which is reinforced by um, cables, uh, which, is, which are um, um, connected at the ends uh, and uh, have uh, in, uh, grouted uh, in between the ends of the uh, cable with certain um, clear uh, stiffness uh, assigned to the grout. And here we run um, four point bending test. And here you can see the video of how this test runs. Uh, we can see that uh, cracking starts at uh, concrete at the bottom uh, of this uh, slab, uh, somewhat propagates, but um, complete fracture and failure of this um, slab is resisted uh, due to presence of the um, of the cable. But at some point, fracture is happening. It's going to happen right now. And we can see that forces on the top drop because this uh, slab got um, basically uh, fractures appeared at the ends here. Uh, this model also allows for modul modulus degradation, and uh, it has compatible uh, more Coulomb yielding criteria. Uh, finally, uh, I wanted to mention factor of safety analysis before switching to a few other modules. Uh, FLAG2D has powerful factor of safety calculations with model factor of safety commands. Uh, it uses strength reduction method, which is in conjunction with full dynamic time marching solution, provides exact boundary between stable and unstable states. So it's much more accurate than any other um, approximate methods like limit analysis or limit equilibrium or method of slices. Uh, because it really runs full uh, solution to find um, where the material fails and what would be the appropriate factor of safety. This command automatically applies to more Coulomb, uh, ubiquitous joint, and hook brown models. Uh, it does automatic bracketing uh, to progressively reduce strength properties until failure state is reached. Uh, users can specify which properties to include or exclude. For example, you can run uh, analysis of uh, factor of safety uh, considering tension failure, uh, for example, for tunnel roofs. Uh, you can account for interfaces presence and also reduce their properties like cohesion and friction. You can uh, specify accuracy, resolution, and other properties. And you can create factor of safety contours as shown here, which will provide information of uh, different uh, factor of safety values at different positions or different locations in the model. Fluid module uh, in flag 2 d uh, is classical flag-free style fluid logic, uh, implements classical flag-free uh, flag d style fluid logic. And it's um, uh, often used for simulation of effects of consolidation, seepage, liquefaction, and other effects. This is though single phase fluid flow. Uh, this is one thing that uh, we haven't implemented yet uh, or transferred from flag 8.1 which uh, also has two-phase um, two fluid flow. Uh, however, there will be improvements coming in uh, future versions of flag 2 d with regard to this uh, fluid logic, uh, which will make it easier to uh, simulate um, two-phase fluid flow. Uh, here are some outlines of uh, fluid flow logic. And one of the highlights that I wanted to mention is that we have new implicit solvers, such as precondition conjugate gradient or direct sparse solver solvers, uh, which allows speed up of uh, between 10 and 100 times. Uh, however, they work only on fully saturated uh, fluid flow. 
Uh, and uh, if you use implicit solvers, you can easily use these ones. Um, there's a good description and documentation about how to use these solvers. And here are examples of what you can plot uh, when using uh, fluid logic, um, like phreatic surface, fixed uh, pore pressure conditions, discharge vectors, and so on. Uh, with regard to optional modules, we have thermal and creep modules. Uh, thermal module, it's uh, pretty much the same as in flux 3 d uh, with the addition of uh, same uh, implicit solvers, uh, preconditioned conjugate gradient and direct solvers, which uh, allow for speed up of between 10, uh, between 100 and 1,000 times uh, for uh, thermal calculations. This is very useful when you run uh, very long analysis, for example, in nuclear waste analysis, sometimes you need to run them for uh, thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years. And this solver significantly speed up any operations. Uh, in general, uh, thermal logic is often used for transient heat conduction and related mechanical effects or advections and related fu fluid effects or hydration of concrete, for example. We also have uh, 10 creep models uh, to simulate creep behavior of materials. Uh, which range from classical viscoelastic models to uh, viscoplastic models that often used in um, uh, nuclear waste uh, analysis, for example, WIP salt model. With this, uh, I would like to switch to Derek, and uh, he will continue with description of dynamic module. So briefly, Factor D includes a dynamic option. Dynamics includes liquefaction modeling. Another important aspect of our dynamic module is our damping options, which include local, hysteretic, Rayleigh, and Maxwell damping. Maxwell damping is a new feature in Flat 2D. It addresses some of the shortcomings of, um, of the Rayleigh damping. Um, for example, Rayleigh damping had a tendency to severely affect the time step in uh, models with uh, varying size zones. Maxwell damping effect or, uh, addresses some of the shortcomings. Another improvement to our dynamic option is multi is multi stepping, which um, is a routine that uh, benefits models, large models with varying size zones and reduces the calculation time for those very large models. Dynamics is also included in for our structural elements, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then lastly, uh, we offer a dynamic input wizard, which gives um, users the ability to filter and do baseline uh, corrections to um, their dynamic um, histograms and accelerations. Um, and then I also wanted to mention um, for our dynamics, we have a very in-depth uh, number of tutorials um, that teach you how to use uh, the different types of boundary conditions. Um, and also different, um, it teaches you how to do the different uh, types of damping. So include a number of uh, examples um, as for dams, how you can do dynamic analysis for mechanical or hydromechanical coupling. And then also a popular topic for dynamics is liquefaction. And we include a number of um, examples for liquefaction. And then over here on the right is a brief um, video I'm going to show where this is actually a, a wharf. It's a platform um, supported by two pile elements that is being shaken from side to side. And it's uh, recording the displacement at the top and the bottom of the model. So this is something you can do in our with our uh, dynamic option in Plot 2D. Okay, moving on. My next topic I'm going to discuss are structural elements in Plot 2D. In Flag 2D, we have four main types of structural elements. They're called beams, cables, piles, and liners. Um, we also include a structural element called block bolts. They are an extension of piles, um, but they're not the, one of the main um, structural elements we have in Flag 2D. Um, our structural elements have a very robust element to grid interaction, which we call links. You can link your structural element to the grid in a variety of ways, depending on what type of element you're using, a pile or a liner. Also link um, different types of elements to each other. So you can link a cable to a beam or a cable to a liner. This allows you to create um, a very complicated model using these different elements. Um, structural elements are actually a point stress element. Um, however, you can um, have the option to define uh, spacing and out of plane spacing at um, one meters, two meters, or whatever unit you wish. 
We also include in our elements an embedded element. An embedded element allows you to create either side of the element. This might this only be useful example. For example, if you have a wall that's dividing two different types of material on one side, you might want different properties between the links than on the other side. Um, and as I had mentioned, our structure element logic includes dynamics and the thermal option. Um, I should say th the thermal option is under development and will be released later. Our structural elements also include, are also fish and Python capable, and the Python um, capability is under construction as well. The image on the left, or excuse me, on the right, is just um, kind of a toy example showing on top the uh, different types of uh, linear elements. So on the far left, are, we have, um, let's see if I can get my, are you pointing? We have beams and then get uh, supporting the open excavation, uh, cables inside the material, and then a pile wall. And then um, below this model is um, the liner elements and they're lining such as like something like shot creek, shot creek in a, in a tunnel. So just real be briefly, I'm gonna talk about some of the applications for these structural elements. Um, so beams are our most simple element. They are rigidly connected to the grid. Um, they're use, often used for braced excavations or rigidly connected walls. Um, braced, and braced excavation would be the simple example down on the, on the left. Uh, cables are a little more um, sophisticated element type. It's often used for uh, soil reinforcement, uh, pull-out tests, and tunnel support. Uh, for example, here's an oval-like tunnel, um, cables embedded in the in the soil, and it, um, it's showing the contour of the axial force on each cable. The last two structural elements in Black 2D are piles and liners. Um, piles are um, uh, or an element that is often used for uh, soil re reinforcement um, and bearing effects and foundation support, such as the warp example video that I showed. And then lastly, liners are um, a little different than the last three elements I talked about. Liners are formulated to be continuous out of plane, much like a continuous wall. Um, and they're often used for tunnel lining, such as Shakri, and they're often used for um, walls, such as in this example below where we're seeing um, the vertical uh, liner wall and the moments um, acting upon the wall itself. All right, lastly, for structural elements, um, like with dynamics, we have a very in-depth number of uh, examples. And there's certainly many more examples for how to uh, link these structural elements to your flat 2D grid, which is typically the case. You want to see how these support members are behaving on your model. For example, in this video here, this is a stage excavation of a tunnel where we're seeing little chunks of the tunnels being excavated in the support members, the cables um, progressing into the, the material and the, um, the liner itself is modeled as beams, how the forces are distributed, distributed into these elements as the stage excavation takes place. We'll look at that one more time. This is just one very common example of what you can do with structural elements in Black 2D. All right, and with that, that'll end the portion about structural elements. And I wanted to kind of, I want to kind of change gears and talk about uh, Python. After this, I'll quick, briefly mention some fish capabilities. But first, um, Python 3.10.5 is embedded in Black 2D. Python offers a variety of um, possibilities in our code in Black 2D. One of them is that Py, um, Python may give you faster functions. Um, if you're writing a function in Fish, you can't. The equivalent Python function um, is on average about 10% faster. Python also gives us the ability to do a array style programming with a module called NumPy. Array style programming, is, uh, the same concept is that you're operating on a whole list of different objects and then rather than this. Um, uh, looping through each one and doing something to it. So there's um, enormous speed gains, speed gains with array style programming. We have module Python modules embedded in Black 2D. Uh, they are NumPy, SciPy, MatPy, MatPy, Lib, PyPy, and PySide, um, and many more. 
I won't go into the detail of, of each of these modules, but these are the big ones. A uh, question that often pops up is, uh, what if I have my own module or another module on, on the internet that I want? Just third party party modules can be added, um, but they're just not verified like our built-in modules. So what can you do with Python that is so unique? Well, for one is you can run a parametric studies quickly. Um, and this little figure on the, on the right here, um, that code, this the seven or eight lines of code, actually runs a parametric study by changing the Young's modulus in a model um, from these four values, 6 e, e 9 to 12 e 9 um, And it runs it sequentially where it loads the, the before cycling model, changes the modulus, and runs it, spits out the results, and then goes to the next one. So um, with FISH, this would not be possible because it does not because on a model restore or a model new, all their information is always erased. Python, that is not the case. So it gives us the ability to run parametric studies. A couple other things you can do with Python is you can import and triplet material properties, often done with more pressure. Um, you can optimize and calibrate models, and you can create um, custom UI or UI um, dialogues or wizards, commonly kind of known as wizards. So I won't go into the building of this um, this UI with PySci. Um, however, what you can see what you can do with Python is um, in this top pane here, there's a bunch of Python code. Basically what that does, did for me was it created my own um, dialog, this demo GUI, where I can specify the number of zones, the constitutive models and assign properties. And just with each of these actions, I can create my grid click properties, boundary conditions, and excavate, and I would do something like this. Um, this is a very sophisticated, sophisticated thing you can do with Python. You have to know quite a bit about how to run Python, but it gives us this ability to, or the user the ability to make their, make their own customized UI. Okay, uh, that's it for Python. And then we'll briefly, uh, Fish is our built-in scripting language. I'm not gonna talk about what everything about fish, but rather just about this new um, capability in fish, which is multi-threaded fish. So we've added two concepts here, fish splitting, and we won't go into the detail with the syntax because that's not important, but what fish, fish splitting allows you to do is it takes um, a list of all these objects, say, uh, for zones, and then it allows you to do something on this entire list, say, assign a property or do something to it, rather than looping through each individual zone and doing something to it. It, it, will, it makes the operation run much quicker. And then, and the same thread is uh, something called a fish operator. The fish operator is a function that you define and it will take these lists and it will run them on a, in a threaded environment. So on your machine with multiple cores, multiple threads, it will run them on all threads and your operation runs significantly faster than rather than just looping on one single zone at a time. Below is an example uh, of a flak 2 example with about 630,000 zones where we're just randomly changing the property, uh, some property. And you can see on the right, using this regular loop all the way down to the fastest um, operation of using an operator, the time difference where using an operator is almost instant, whereas a, a, a while loop where you're up, where you're doing something on each zone sequentially takes quite a bit of time. Okay, and that's it for my um, part. I'll hand it back off to Andre. Uh, I will continue uh, with last few slides to conclude the presentation. So as you can see, Flag2D is very flexible. It contains various modules. It contains built-in scripting language. It allows writing and running Python scripts and even bring in your own modules. Uh, it has very versatile UI, user interface. You can uh, quickly mesh models, uh, design them, and so on. Uh, so some other features that uh, adds to flexibility, it's uh, easy coupling with PFC 2D, even though license for version 9 would be required. But here's an example. So you can see how Flag 2D can be coupled with PFC 2D. Uh, and you can pretty much write code within one file that uh, will use both PFC and flag2d commands. And this example shows uh, 
a study of sediment deposition on very soft soil, deformable soil. Uh, so whoever runs uh, some research studies or something more complex, this is going to be very useful for you. Uh, FLAG2D is available on both Windows and Linux platforms. FLAG2D uh, allows running demo version with up to 1,000 zones. And you can see here on the right that you can run, uh, you can create relatively decent model with 1,000 zones and run fl full FLAG2D functionality. We also allow uh, now, or FLAG2D supports all uh, license types, including web licensing. And FLAG2D license allows you to run FLAG 8.1 using FLAG2D license. What's coming next? Very briefly, uh, first we're going to concentrate on uh, adding more documentation, examples, and tutorials. Uh, we're going to continue improving using user experience and user interface to make model creation uh, and execution easier, uh, basically adding new features in user interface. Uh, we're going to overhaul. We actually almost done this, almost completed this, but it's still uh, not publicly available. So it will be coming in future versions. Overhaul fluid logic calculations, which would uh, be easier and faster. Uh, implicit solutions will work even for partially saturated uh, flow, and it will allow different permeability suction uh, relationships. Uh, we will uh, work on uh, developing more tools to assist with model transfer from previous versions of FLAC, like FLAC 8.1 or earlier. Uh, we will uh, work on more integrations with other software and vendors, and also we will we plan to work on uh, developing automatic rezoning in flag 2D, even though it's going to be uh, quite different than in flag because flag uses structured meshing and we very general meshing in flag 2D, including unstructured. And of course, we're going to add more features, whatever uh, important going to come to our uh, list of features and whatever is needed for flag 2D and for engineers. So with this, I would like to conclude presentation. I would like to thank you all for your interest and your participation in this presentation. Two weeks trial uh, is available to anyone registered for this webinar, so don't wait and request it today. Uh, here are a few links that you can see uh, for uh, uh, requesting three week trial, requesting a quote. We, I would also like to mention that uh, Itasca software, there is a forum, internet forum, uh, where Users of Itasca software can discuss uh, different topics and issues. There's also Software Academy where people can uh, sign up to learn, to, to um, watch or attend different online courses. And there's flag to d introductory course. Uh, and if you have any technical issues, you can uh, send a question to technical support. So this is, I believe, the last slide. And with this, I would like to conclude the presentation and we are open to questions. Great. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Andre and Derek. Um, we're a bit over time, so we'll keep it just to a few questions, uh, and then we will follow up uh, with your questions if we, if we don't get it done now. Um, so one question was, is it possible to import complex geometry from AutoCAD? Um, you should, Andre illustrated that in the uh, live demo. So um, the answer to that is yes. Um, just one comment. Uh, someone is looking forward to having a Dirk theme. So if you want to add that to the development list. So uh, a question. Does FLAC2D support the C++ models available for older versions of FLAC? Unfortunately, no. Uh, this is because they are built on different platform and different uh, using different template. Uh, those models will have to be rebuilt uh, in a modern version of Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio 2022, I believe. However, FLAG2D provides very well documented template for creating user-defined C++ models. And it's relatively straightforward how to do it. Uh, feel free to go into help and just follow pretty much step-by-step -step guideline of how to create C++ uh, model. And if you already have model created, you can easily recreate it for FLAG2D. And also, I would like to note that you can download uh, Visual Studio uh, Community Edition for free. So pretty much creating uh, user-defined models is free. You just need uh, 
to spend a little bit of time of downloading uh, Visual Studio Community Edition and follow the guideline that's available in our help system to create your own model. Great, thank you, Andre. Uh, and I, last question um, for today's uh, webinar. Can we write a code in Python to build and run a model instead of fish? If yes, do fish operators work in Python? Uh, in general, you can uh, build a whole model in Python. You will uh, probably have to run uh, certain commands or fish from Python. Uh, pretty much there is a way to execute commands and fish from Python. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, there are plenty of examples in our documentation. Uh, I didn't provide any examples in this presentation, but in general, the answer to this is yes, it's doable. Great. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Uh, with that, I think we'll conclude today's webinar. Um, there will be an email sent out to everybody who registered uh, with uh, information of how to um, find the video or recording of this webinar, get a PDF of the slide uh, set, and also some of those links to some of those resources, including the free trial, um, the uh, Software Academy, uh, et cetera. Um, and with that, we'll conclude the webinar. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Derek. And thank you, everyone, for um, staying with us for the webinar.